Coming in from the left side, we have one of the most respected men in his world. He is the gentleman of the four heavenly kings. Respected widely, well known, renowned for his fortune telling abilities, as well as being the poison man. He is none other than Coco. And coming in from the right side, we have the possessor of the Venom Venom fruit. He himself is also a poison man. He was the former head jailer, now the vice, former head warden, now the vice warden of the infamous M. Pell Dow. He is none other than Magellan. Let us begin. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this death battle is like three weeks late, okay? For those who are subscribers to my channel, I apologize. I, if y'all are fans of my death battles, I madly apologize. Now, understand this, okay? I tried to make this video like two weeks ago, right? It was a Sunday. YouTube was being gay as hell. Okay, it was being retarded. It would not be. I tried four times to upload a video. I got frustrated. I didn't want to do anything to do it. It kept coming up in my mind, but I had other videos to do. I had other things to do. My life's been busy. Busy, busy. But I'm like, you know what? This Friday, I got the energy. I'm, I'm on the roll. It's time. It's the new year. Let's go. We need even more death battles. And yeah. Now, I will say this, a subscriber, um, I believe a subscriber, he was like, yo, dude, right, like, you doing these death battles and stuff, why not do similar attributes, I'm like, yo, guess what, that, that's how I mentioned, he actually mentioned it, he's like, yo, why not do Coco and Magellan, I'm like, that was actually my next death battle, which I actually had hinted at the end of my last death battle, which was, uh, Monkey D. Luffy versus Toriko. Excellent death that I had a lot of had some contention on that one, but it is what it is. This death battle is a little less controversial. The outcome may surprise some, but as I always do, I bring the analysis, baby. I start with three major categories and break each category down into a few subcategories. Now, my category, my first main category, is attack, and under attack are Strength, we're talking about physical strength, ladies and gentlemen. Speed, techniques, and destructive capacity slash power. And when it comes to strength, that would be the four Evan Kings, the Kings, they are physically physically powerful. Not gonna lie. They are strong. Um how strong it's it's hard to determine physical strength. They're built around especially Torco. You now, Torko and Zebra, especially, are monsters. Koku's still powerful, but he relies mainly on his poison ability. So, his physical strength is easily superhuman. Easily superhuman. Probably above superhuman. They will go superior to superhuman. Now, when we look at Magellan, Magellan, we didn't see much physical um, feats from him, but he is a giant man. It's said to he's three times the size of the average uh, of an average man um, or of a very tall man or something. He's a giant of a man. He's a he's a monster. He, you could say he definitely easily has um, probably superhuman physical strength. But in as far as an edge, who I would give it to, I would probably give this one to Coco, simply because the Bishokyo, like these dudes in Toro are monsters. They got a lot. Especially if you've seen the most recent stuff, they're monsters. So I have to give the edge slightly to Coco. One point, Coco's way. Now when we go with speed, unlike against what a lot of people are saying, because I had this discussion, like yeah, the Torko gods are not really speed gods. Even Tengu Brunch, okay, they're not really speed gods. Torko, I mean, what we saw in the Four Kings are, are not the Four Kings are, what we saw in the Force Beast four beast arc is that none of the kings could travel at the speed of sound 
always able to travel at the speed of sound. Now they're probably faster now, but I still say they're subsonic, okay? I just leave it at that. They're subsonic. Until I see otherwise examples, all the kings besides Zebra are subsonic, okay? When you look at Magellan, it doesn't matter because Magellan's not really a speedster himself. He doesn't rely on speed. Now, I'm not saying he's completely, you know, slow. No, we just didn't really see any speed uh, traits. So, who do I have to I have to give it to Coco? Once again, so Coco's up to now. Now, when we look at techniques, now, techniques is going to be very interesting. Because both of these characters are poison users. Okay, so they're both poison. Mm, they're very lethal with their abilities. When you look at it, Coco... He has, I mean, you got a poison armor, you have this poison spear, like near weak speed of light attack speed, okay? You have whether it's, you got the devil poison, where his gourmet, gourmet monster, gourmet cells came out of him and actually did positive. You, he has various types of poison. He's, yeah, he's mastered pretty much every, he mastered every poison in the human world. He may have mastered some of the gourmet world. What what other what other attacks is he? Have? He also has his kiss. I always I've been constantly forgetting Kiss's name in my Torkoal reviews. Thank you. I just remember Kiss, his King Crow. So he flies on that as well. Um his Emperor Crow. And any other any other main attacks? He probably has a few other ones, but those are those are the ones that are most notable. Now when when um when it comes to Magellan, Magellan, he too, like, his poison is ridiculous. Like, it's not only, and I, I had to do research on Magellan because I had forgot so long. When I, when I did this video, I had to go back and do research on him. And I, what I found was that his poison, it rests in liquid state, but it can also be in a gassy state. So you can have various toxic gases when it comes to him. So that, that's huge. Okay, we're talking about... Um, what's the, what's the, probably, was it mustard gas? I'm trying to think. What's the, um, what's the one I'm really thinking of? But various, um, poisons and gases, regardless, various toxic gases. He has his liquid moves. We see that, we see, um, you know, we see the Hydra a hell of a lot. We also see the, um, I forget some of the other moves, because like I said, it's been a while. But we know one of the, the, the that big one, the, the Venom Demon okay hell's judgment that thing is is monstrous it's it's crazy so as far as techniques i gotta say they're evil coco's still up at this point now when you look at their destructive capacity right coco unlike once again toroko or zebra but even sonny at the point we have not really seen coco we, we know he's lethal, but we have not really seen him portray destructive capacity. We have not seen him power, power attacks. I'm not saying he can't do it. Come on, he's powerful. But we just haven't really seen it. So, his power is still questionable. He's powerful, but no, I wouldn't say as far as his raw power, I, I wouldn't put it that way. And when we're talking about Magellan, though, his, his poison, like I said, he has various poisons gases. In him, too, we haven't really seen him do. All we met him was in Impel Down. Okay. But when you when you consider the fact that it is said that his venison, nothing, shoot, it can melt, it can destroy stone. Like, it can melt it. Like, nothing is surviving that. So, based on that, I'd have to, as far as in destructive capacity goes, I'd have to lean towards Magellan. So, overall... When you look at it from strength and speed wise, I had I had to give the edge to Coco. Techniques I got I saw them about even. They're both masters, experts of, of poison usage. And when it comes to destructive capacity, because we really haven't seen the feats from Coco, but we what we know about Magellan is that his venom demon, okay? That thing will destroy. It said it was said that we could destroy Impel Down, and Impel Down is no joke. So I had to give it to I had to give it to Magellan. Now, when we look at defense, defense I break it down into four subcategories. I break it down also the four subcategories: reaction time, durability, stamina, and agility. Now, when we look at reaction time, 
Coco. His reaction time is good. It's good. Like like the rest of the Kings, they have actually excellent. They have excellent reaction time. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna front. They just have excellent reaction time. I'm not gonna linger on that they do. Magellan, we didn't really see much. I'm not gonna lie. We did not really see much from him. This is a clear cut easy win. Coco gets it in reaction time. We just did not. The feats weren't there. Because Magellan doesn't have to rely on reaction time because his poison wrecks most people. He, his devil fruit is one of the most lethal in the One Piece world. Now, and the way he, he, he masterfully knows how to use it. And when regards to durability, Coco, like the rest of the kings, he, he's a tank. He's not as, he, he him and Sanji especially, can't tank as much as, for example, Toriko can. They can tank a lot, but they, they're not tanks. Now when it comes to Magellan though, from his, not just his ability, his ability, Magellan, what he lacks in reaction time, he always makes up for it in his durability. That dude is a monster. He can tank a hell of a lot. The fact of the matter is, you gotta understand, ladies and gentlemen, he took on the whole Blackbeard Pirates. We're talking about Blackbeard, okay, who defeated Porticus the Ace, Fire Fist Ace, 500 million bear bounty. We're talking about he defeated Blackbeard along with his crew and Shiru of the Rain. Not only that, the th four or so escapees from Impel Down. From level six of them, we're talking about some of the baddest names in the One Piece world of that era. So we're talking about he defeated a whole pirate crew. And if it was not for the antidote which Shuru found. Now it is said that Blackbeard, Blackbeard, they were saying they did get caught off guard. They did way well cocky. But still, nonetheless, he defeated a very powerful crew. Very group. Nine, ten people. Now, we do see later that he was ran through, you know, Blackbeard and them probably ran through, but still, the fact is, Luffy couldn't touch him, and Luffy up now is, is for sure, but still, Luffy couldn't touch him, the fact is, man, like, he was wrecking fools, he was, he was on the alone to, Emperor Ivanka couldn't touch him, you understand what I'm saying, this dude easily wins in the dur durability category, now when we go to Stammer, Coco, we've seen him exhausted, now, my you, it's Grim Patch, especially in the battle with Grim Patch. We've seen it in the 4 Beast arc, but then we saw it also again in the Cooking Island arc. Grim Patch. Grim Patch, his, infil his filtration system was crazy. Now, what will happen to Grim Patch, we have no idea. But, we know that Grim Patch, writ, if not for the monster gourmet cells, it wouldn't have been a tie. Coco would have lost and probably would have gotten killed. Just being real. And when we look at Magellan, Magellan, once again, we saw him in the hospital and from him later. But the fact is, this dude, he was fighting, like, oh, and another point I would add slightly to his own. Um, no, no, I'll add that later. But you can argue that he he's comfortable. Well, Coco can survive through poison and, and everything. Coco can survive in harsh climates. But um, I'll deal with that later. But with Coco, with, um, with Magellan, like, yo, this dude was, now, it, here's the problem with him, he, because of his, his diet, he eats a lot of poisonous food, and he gives diarrhea, um, what was it, eight hours a day, he sleeps, he only is active for four, so you can throw that in, but if he, it was a death match, he's got, four hours is, is enough time, you would, you would gather, say. It is, it's stamina on that regards is, but as far as in his cape fighting capability, he never was tired. Always clashing with Luffy and what if, the whole time he kept using the point, he never tired. So, I would have to say, from what I've seen anyway, I have to go stamina, give it to Magellan. Right now, Magellan's up 2-1 to one on Coco. Now, last but certainly not least, we have Agility. With agility, as far as agility is concerned, once again, just like reaction time, this this doesn't even seem to be much of a challenge, to be honest with you. It's got to go to Coco. And here's why. Coco, even though he's not the most agile dude, you know, he's still, he's still swift on his feet. He's still showing heavy movement. We just really haven't seen much much quickness, much fleet of foot action from Magellan, which is in Alright, uh, which is in 
So at the end of the day with defensive categories, they're not at all. So right now it seems Coco has a slight edge because of the attack category. Now we go to the third major category, which is strategy. And I break that down into three subcategories. And one, we have location. We also have fighting style. And last, but definitely, and one of the most important, is fighting IQ. Now, when you look at locations, and here, and I started bro talking about that with Sam. Coco, he can survive in the gourmet world. We've seen, you know, it's said he can swim through poison seas. He can survive through a lot of them. So, anywhere you put him, he's pretty much straight. Okay? When you look at Magellan, Magellan, he was just fine and dandy in desert situations, which was killing folks. In ice situations, fine and dandy. At every level, he was good. Good to go. The only thing about him is his, he's a devil for you. So if he's in Seawalk, it's over with him. It's over. But considering the fact that we have not yet seen Coco fight on the water, I don't know if that's much of a, a worry. So when it comes to location, they're probably solid, you know, pretty squared away. It's one of the most even matches you can see from there. So no no favors coming in, except for the seawater potential, but I don't really see that happening. I don't think Coco wants to fight in the water yet. Now, when it comes to fighting style, this is key. Coco is a close to mid-range fighter. Besides a couple of attacks he has, for example, the the power spear which actually takes a lot of poison to use so don't expect him to be spamming that junk and as of yet okay he's not gonna be doing that looking like Apollo he's not gonna be doing that a bunch people okay don't get twisted if he gets you know but you also gotta realize that though Magellan he unlike most people can take poison like it's nothing he's also a poison user he's a poison you know poison man so understand that when you know close to mid range for the most part except a couple of attacks when we look at Magellan, Magellan's a mid to long range fighter. This is this is one of the key points I think will, will help determine this fight. Because Magellan, we saw with the Hydra, he was doing that casually. He was on that, on that. And I'm pretty sure he could use more heads, you understand? Those things were all over the place. And especially with his demon arc. That Venom Demon? The Hell's Judgment? He only shit thing. It's, it's... That thing was flooding the place. So he, when it comes to range, I think that that's huge. Now, Coco, if he gets in there, he can do some mad damage with some hits. But good luck getting in there. And the fact that Magellan has such high durability, it kind of negates that that um, internal, internal, you know, going round and round. Now, Coco and the rest of the kings have souped up, and we especially seen if you read the latest chapter of uh, Toroko. They've upped their game, but still. But still. Now, when you go with fighting IQ, now, Coco is not a fighting genius. Oh, and one of the things I would also like to add on to uh, with techniques, I mentioned on um, Coco's fortune telling. He can see electromagnetic waves, okay? You can see those. When you go with it, Coco, he relies on those electromagnetic waves. He also relies heavily on his poison usage. He he keeps inventing new poisons, you know. As far as in what is so he he's a he's a poison fighter. He he really relies on those poisons. Um not too much hand to hand combat, although he can fight. He you know, he ducks and dodges. And he uses a lot of precision attacks. And when it comes to Magellan, Magellan, with his Hydras, he's a he's an off-standing fighter. He doesn't like to get his hands dirty, but he uses his poison in a lot of different ways. You understand? He could use, you know, whether it's smokes or or the Hydra. He he's a standoffish. He's a distance fighter. From what we've seen of of Coco, Coco does a lot of precision attacks, and. Coco would have to target him, but would Magellan allow a bunch of openings? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Magellan, it, it's not a good matchup for Coco in that regards. They're fighting IQ, and you could say that's, that's their, you know, styles, 
But when they're fighting 9Q, Coco's got, he's got some solid fight 9Q. Magellan's no slouch either. So they're, it's hard to say who who's actually on a higher plane. They're both, they're both highly intelligent when it comes to battles. Now overall, I mean, this video was actually shorter than the one I made, which is good because because I was trying to remember a lot when I was doing this last time. Overall, this is a tough call. I remember last time I was like, it took me a minute or two to figure out who to determine. But when I look at it, and you look at the things about attack, and you, and you look at the defense seemingly even, and you look at the fighting, you know, what this really comes down to for me. When you, when you scratch off everything, there's a lot of evenness, which we knew coming into this. I mean, besides the poison, these two are two beastly characters. When you look at it, I look at the the range, I look at the styles. The fight IQ actually is not that um, important in this fight, like it is in, so we scratch it off. Physical strength, Coco ain't really, you know, even though he edges him out, it's nothing spectacular. Speed. That may come into play, but Coco's got to get in, and getting in is going to take a hell of a lot of stamina, which will negate some of his more powerful attacks. He can't just use his monster gourmet cells at will, so that, that's problematic in of itself. You know, we've seen him drain himself of poison usage in the battle with Green Patch, which it's arguable whether he will or will not do against Magellan. Arguable. Um... Magellan's durability is going to come huge in this fight and his range. I think Magellan plus his stamina is question whether Coco can go into a long battle. It's, it's questionable. We don't know. We have never seen Coco go into an extensively long battle. We've seen Magellan go off against Luffy on a few occasions. So, you know, overall, I have to give this victory. No bias. I have to go Magellan. The reasons I stated the range is a huge factor. The durability and stamina issues. Now, you can say, but, you know, Magellan with his diary, whatever. But, that's the fact is, can Coco get him to ingest? Coco ain't a speedster. If he had more speed, that would be huge. But, Magellan could survive. Even though he might have diary, he could survive. You understand? I don't really see Coco really getting many openings. So, and that, look man, say what you want, but that Venom's Demon, that Venom Demon is no joke. Coco, as is, great is as he is, I don't see him surviving too much of that. I don't see it. I just don't see it. You know, something that can destroy Impel Down. As massive as that was, with stone and everything, something that could destroy that. It's crazy. Just saying. Alright, the unexpected winner, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me all thoughts on this battle, on this death match. It's, you know, it's it's one of those question moments. It really is. It, it was a tough call. You know, no bias. I, you know, it, look, if you know my channel, I review Toroko. I'm one piece of ad. There, there was no bias for me. I'm just going simply facts. Now, if you disagree, come with the logic, reason, facts, and evidence, okay? That's what I tried to tell people last time. They, they, they disagreed with me on, on, for example, the Luffy versus Toroko battle. Well, you know what? They didn't bring to me the, the factual evidence enough to overturn my decision. I come to these conclusions based off of the evidence I have and my understanding. All right, y'all. Till next time. And one hit. Next death match. And like I said, there are no more hiatuses like this. Next death match will come when it can. Two legendary icons of video games. Peace.